Hello church family. What an awesome time of the year as we have already entered into the Christmas season. I would like to say Merry Christmas to all of you. Why don't you quickly also turn to your neighbor and just wish them a Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. You know, there's something special about the Christmas season. Uh, things begin to change. It gets a little more brighter at night because the lights are on. Things change in our house, gifts as you see, uh, more smile on the face. The music on the radio station is playing a lot more Christmas songs. So it's a special time of the year. It's a special time of the year that we get to celebrate something awesome and something great. And I believe that what I would like to share with all of you here today, it's going to bless you. It's going to challenge you. Because during the Christmas season, we know that something special happens. What actually, why, why do we celebrate Christmas season? Where are the kids? Help me out here. The birth of Jesus. For our Heavenly Father loved us so much that He took from us, right? No. He gave to us His Son, Jesus, as a gift. And uh, about a week ago or so, we started a new series that God is with us. And as we read in Matthew 123, it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. A couple of questions. How many of you enjoy receiving something like a gift? Come on, let's be honest here. Come on. We all do. We all do. It does not matter what age you are. All of us still have an inner child. All of us. More than a month ago when I was celebrating my 24th birthday. No, sorry, I got it backwards. My 42nd birthday. Uh, my friends took me out, and I wasn't expecting them to give me any gifts, but they did. And guess what? I felt good. It's good that people can recognize you. It's good that people can do something good for you. So gifts is awesome to receive. Another question. How many of you have received at least one gift from your Heavenly Father, from God? At least one gift. We all have. A special, the main gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. Well, here's another question. I want you to think about it. How many of you have received a gift from the devil? Interesting, huh? None of us have. Because he doesn't give any gifts. Devil is what I like to call this Christmas season is the Grinch. He came to steal your gift. He came to steal your joy. He came to steal your hope. Your encouragement. Your health. Whatever it is. He's a thief. So today I'm not one to focus on him, I want to focus on God, the giver. And today I want to talk about every gift is from above. And it's written in James 1, 16 through 17. Don't be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. What an awesome thing it is, knowing that we have an awesome God who loves his children, who desires to do the best for his children and the gifts that he has prepared for all of us. And today I'm going to be doing a little bit of an illustrated message to demonstrate a few things. And I have four gifts on the stage. And in each of these boxes, there's something there. And as we unwrap them, there's going to be something there. And in a certain way, shape, and form, it's going to speak to you. It may encourage you. It will challenge you. It will allow you to think about certain things. How many of you can agree that this year and last year was a little bit somewhat rough a couple of years? In different ways. For some of you, it might have been financially tough, physically tough, emotionally, spiritually. Some of you maybe are entering through this Christmas season, but your loved one is not going to be there to celebrate with you. So we know that life, it comes at us hard sometimes. And nobody can plan for what just even happened a few days ago in Kentucky with tornadoes. Nobody just says, oh, you know, I think we're going to have destruction and have whole, our whole town destroyed. Nobody plans for these things. But bad things do happen. But I do believe that our Heavenly Father, He loves us so much that during this season of our life, He has something for you special. Something that will strengthen you. Something that will encourage you. And something that will lift you up. So, but... Obviously, you know, we as parents, we tend to prepare gifts for our children. So I guess it wouldn't be right for me as an adult to open up these gifts. So I have a couple of helpers. They're going to help me out today. They know who they are. Come on. Come on down to the stage. You know, guys, is it okay to have fun in church? Or we got to be very serious and strict? Okay. All right. Here they are. Let's give them a warm welcome to 
Nathan and Savina. Take a seat there, guys, for a second. All right. You know, Nathan and Savina, uh, many kids, they believe in Santa Claus. But today, I won't be Santa Claus. I'll be Santa Claus, and you're going to be my little helpers, okay? All right. By the way, that word is copyrighted, Santa Claus. Anyway, so there's uh, four gifts, and they're going to help me to unwrap these gifts. And each one has a specific, I guess you could say, message to it that I believe that the Lord is going to speak to you, that will strengthen you and encourage you. All right, Savina, you're up first. Are you ready? Here, take this one over here on top. Take that gift. You can place it over here. Or it's not going to bite you. And unwrap it for us like you would on Christmas Day or Christmas morning. It's not going to bite. Keep on going. You can tell a girl is open it very carefully. Us boys, wow, we're just tearing the whole thing up. Keep on going. Keep on going. You don't have to take off all the paper. You can just open up the box and see what's inside. Box number one. The mystery box number one. You can tell she bites her nails. If not, she would have just went, ship. <laughs> what do we got in there? <gasps> what is that? What is this? Can you lift it up, show it to the church? What is that? What is that, Savannah? It's a rock. A rock. Let me ask this question. Who in the world puts a rock as a gift? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, thank you. You can take a seat. <laughs> Figures, you know. You guys either know me too well or... <laughs> When I was about age 10 and 11, uh, I went underneath the Christmas tree and I was looking for my gift and I found the box. It was like maybe about the shoe size. And as soon as I picked it up, I'm like, this thing is heavy. And as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, I'm like, the heavier it is, the more expensive it is, the nicer it is. Because then I went to the other boxes with my siblings. They were like, I'm like, oh man, I got the best Christmas gift ever. Christmas comes around, everyone's opening their gift and here comes my turn. I'm ripping that box open, and I say, oh, as soon as I open it up, there's a cinder block in there. And as I pick it up, all my siblings start laughing. And I don't know if I was crying, but I got mad. It was one of my older brothers who pulled a prank on me. But, you know, uh, even though that's a funny story for my life, I hold a rock here. This rock is symbolic to the rock that the Bible talks about, who is Christ. And I want to read a passage to you in Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And in Matthew 7, 24 and 25, it says, reads this. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, Jesus is talking, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man or a woman who builds his house on a rock. And the rain descends and the floods come and the winds blew and beat on the house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. As I mentioned earlier, church, we all go through tough seasons of our life. Whether it involves us personal or family or marriage or business or finances, the hope that we have at the end of the day is that we're building our life upon the rock who is Christ himself. I know of a lot of people that when issues and problems come into their life, they have nothing to stand upon. They want that hope, but they don't have that hope. They want somebody to reach out to them with love, with affection, but nobody's there. And because of that emptiness, because of that hurt or pain and vacuum, they're going to the wrongful sources to supposedly quench that pain. It could be drinking, drugs, or anything else like that. But I believe, church, that this Christmas season, our Heavenly Father is trying to once again remind us, I send you a gift. Yes, it doesn't look like this. I'm just using an example. The rock, the cornerstone to your life. The rock, the cornerstone to your marriage. The rock, the cornerstone to your future, to your health. And it's a good reminder for us, church, because a lot of times when we go through tough seasons in our life, we think, wow, the storms came, as, as we just read in the Bible. I, I lost this. I lost money. I lost a loved one. My health is not there. I guess there's no purpose. There's no hope. No, there is. 
Because even though things around you may not seem as you want to, our Heavenly Father is once again reminding you, I've given you the gift, who is my son Jesus. You can build your future. You can build your hope upon him. And some of us might be even a little bit intimidated with 2022, like looking at how 21 went by. I don't know if I want to face the year 2022. But I want to encourage you today, my friend. You can face 2022. You can boldly look into the future. Why? Because Jesus is your rock that you build upon. Jesus Christ is your hope. He is your cornerstone. And that is awesome. That is wonderful. Hallelujah. All right. Box number two. Are you next? All right. Nate. Come on down. Uh, make sure I get this in order. The blue one. Come on down, sir. You're next. The mystery gift box number two. Let's see what the crazy Uncle Stan has in there for you. All right. Oh, come on. You got to unwrap it like a boy. Shows those big muscles. Come on. It's not going to bite you. Keep on going. Keep on going. Okay. okay. Upside down. All right. Rip it. Rip it. Come on. Help me out. Rip it. Or else I'm going to help, help your sister help you out. All right. Let's flip it around because it opens to the front over here. I'm going to help him out a little. There we go. Open up. What do we got over there? Where did it get upside down? It's one of these. There we go. There it is. Open it up, sir. Box number two. Is this how they open Christmas gifts at your house too? Come on. I'm sure they're ripping the boxes apart. There we go. What do we got in there? What, what is this? Lift it up for people. Show them. What are those? The seeds. Seeds. Okay. Interesting. Do you know what kind of seeds? No. Nathan, if I'm correct, didn't you tell me not too long ago when you grow up you want to become a farmer? Yes. Yes, he said yes. Okay, so stay up here for a second. So these are seeds. These are actually apple seeds. So what do you typically do? You take the seed and you put it into the soil to grow, right? Okay. So as I mentioned, these are apple seeds. You know, Nathan, uh, I like oranges. So when I sow these apple seeds into the soil, I'm going to grow oranges and eat oranges, right? Because they're apple seeds. Ah, smart boy. All right, you can sit down for a second. Thank you. Interesting. The next point I would like to share with you is concerning seeds. It was good that I asked that question. Because if you sow an apple seed, you should expect an apple harvest. Oranges, bananas, etc., and etc. In other words, within each seed, it reproduces what it has. And here's a verse to remind us about the concept of seeds. And I want to illustrate a little bit what I mean by these seeds and how does that relate to you and me. It's written in Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whoever a man or a woman sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap of the flesh corruption. But he who sows in the spirit will reap the spirit, the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary. Here's the key point. While doing good and in due season will reap if we do not lose heart. Seeds. What are seeds? Seeds are words that we use. Seeds is our finances. Seeds, as we heard today, it's our time. Seeds, it's our good deeds or any type of deeds. Those are seeds in our life. And I think what we need to be challenged with is, my friend, what kind of seeds have I been sowing in my life, in this season of my life? What have I been doing with God, what God has entrusted me with? We know that in the um, uh, Gospel of Mark chapter 4 talks about the seeds being uh, sown into four soils. The wayside, the stony side, the thorns, and the good ground. And I think this Christmas season of our life, our Heavenly Father is challenging us. What is it that you're sowing into your marriage stand? What is it that you're sown into your family? What is it that you're sown into your local church? What is it that you're sown into your local community? 
Because as I asked Nathan the question, well, I like oranges. He's like, well, that's apple seeds. It don't work like that. And sometimes, church, we become surprised that when a certain harvest grows in our life and we're like, whoa, I, I wasn't expecting that. That's not, you know, what I had in mind. And it's maybe a good opportunity for us to reflect on this year. Yesterday we got together with the guys group and I was uh, asked a question. I said, let's do a year in review. What did you guys plan in the beginning of the year? And how did the year, year is already over? And did those things come to pass? Were certain things surprising and, and et cetera? Each one began to share their own story. And I think it's once again, church, for us and as a reminder that God has entrusted us with certain seeds in our life. And I think the challenge is, am I taking the seed of faith and sown in, into someone's life? Am I taking the seeds of hope, seeds of love, seeds of patience, seeds of mercy? Because knowing what is happening right now in our world, this world can definitely use more hope. This world can definitely use more light. This world can definitely use more of godly gifts. And as we enter into the year 2022, and I want to challenge all of you, my friends, if you've never done the 21-day fast, I want to challenge you. That's also a seed and very powerful seeds. Before even I moved to the state of Georgia, uh, my friend uh, Vitali, he came to visit us. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, our church is practicing the 21-day fast. I'm like, what's that? He explained it to me. And when my wife and I begin to practice it, things begin to change in our life like never before. It's because I begin to empty out myself, empty out my flesh, my ego, my selfishness. Said, Lord, let the soil of my heart be open to you so you can sow your kingdom seeds into my life so it can bring kingdom fruit to you and be a blessing to others. All right. Who's next? Box number three. Is it your turn, Savannah? Yes, it is. It's that one over there. Frosty the snowman. Yes. Right over here. Okay, open it up. Thanks for the music. See? Don't worry, you won't hurt Frosty the Snowman's feelings if you rip them. There you go. Come on. Okay. You can just open it up. You don't have to take the rest of them out. It's not upside down, or maybe it is. I think it's upside down. Okay, let me help you out quickly. Gotta wrap it up. There we go. I'm my kid too. I can open up my own gift. All right, go ahead, open it up. What do we got in there? What does Uncle Stan have in us for there? I don't have Santa Claus. There you go. Thank you. There we go. Mm, what is that? <laughs> Hold it up. What is this? Is this uh, Uncle Stan's recycling paper? It's real. Okay, thank you. You can sit down, Savannah. Bunch of papers. This is what I would like to call God's love letters. Because we all go through different seasons of our life, where we sometimes wonder, God, are you there? Like I heard someone's testimony the other day. He's like, when I begin to look at what's happening, I begin to doubt. God, God, why, why are you allowing this sickness? God, why are you allowing this problem? And even though, church, we go from seasons, tough seasons, dark seasons, it's always a good reminder for our Heavenly Father to remind us of what he thinks about us. So for some of you, this is what he's telling you. I love you, my daughter. It doesn't matter what you've gone through in your life. He's reminding you this Christmas season, I love you. For some of you, what you've been facing recently, your Heavenly Father is reminding you, I love you, my son. I'm there for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. For some of us, when you're thinking all hope is lost, he's telling you, I will always be there with you. Through the storms, through the hurricanes, 
through bad seasons, however, maybe I will always be there with you. For some of us, this one's going to be a little touchy. I've been collecting all of your tears. Not a single teardrop has hit the ground. Why? Because for you, the teardrop is falling and you see it hitting the ground, but it's my hand there that's actually collecting every teardrop. Every teardrop. For some of you, he's saying, I will be your hope, I will be your trust, I will be your future. Because as we reflect on this year, as I mentioned before, Lord, I don't know what to expect tomorrow. I don't know what to expect next year. He got you. He got you. For some of you, he's just trying to simply tell you, allow me as your God the Father to be your comfort and to be your peace. That's it. Very simple, small things. Let me be your comfort and your peace. And one more where all of us can relate to in a certain way. He's telling you, your children, your health, your marriage, it's all in my hands. And I think, church, it's a good challenge for us to once again be reminded that when we begin to let go of what we are not able to control, and believe me, there's many things we cannot control. There's many things that are, as we can say, man, everything's going out of control. There's a reason why we use that statement. There's a reason why we use that expression. Everything around me seems like it's falling apart. Let us learn this season not to hold on to the things that are actually not in our power, not in our ability to change. For some of us, it could be marriage, certain things in marriage, trusted to God. Some of you, you may have a prodigal son and daughter. You're thinking, Lord, I don't know what to do with him, with her. Trust it into the hands of God. For some of you, it's health, your finances, whatever it may be. And I think this season, where Heavenly Father is reminding us once again, just let it go and trust me and watch him do some awesome and wonderful things. And we're reading Jeremiah 29, 11, concerning God's love letters. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And the psalmist reminds us in 40, Psalm 40, uh, verse 5, O oh Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. Interesting. God's plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I try to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Can you imagine that, psalmist? says, if I try to recite, remember, oh, you did this, this for me. Ah, forget it. It's, I won't have enough time to go through the list. But you know what, church? Maybe it's a good reminder for us to sometimes just to sit down and say, okay, all this was bad, this was bad, but you know what? Let me cast it on side. Let me start counting, reflecting of all the good things that my Heavenly Father has done for me. And you will be surprised how much it is, especially with the gift of life that is given us through His Son, Jesus. And we got one more gift. Oh, He knows how it goes. Okay, okay. You know what? You don't have to put it up here. Just... Open it up, Nathan. Save the biggest for last. All right, let's see what Uncle Stan has for you over here. Uh, whoever cleans our church, they're not going to be happy with me. Well, that's all right. I'm going to have to buy him a Christmas card or something. All right, open it up. You don't have to unwrap the whole thing. What do we got there? What do we got there? Nothing. nothing. What do you mean nothing? <laughs> There's got to be something there. <laughs> nothing? Are you trying to tell me the Grinch of Christmas came and stole my gift yesterday? That should be in there. Are you sure there's nothing? Maybe it's invisible. All right, you can sit down. Actually, before I proceed to this last example, church, let's give a warm Christmas uh, hand offering to our helpers. You guys can sit down. Thank you, Nathan and Savannah. Thank you, thank you. Actually, so you guys can see there's nothing there. What does this box mean? And it has nothing there. Allow me to 
explain a little bit before it may seem like I'm judging someone or condemning someone because that is a box of hope. This box that we see in front of us, it's you and I. The question is, why is it empty? Or the question should be, an additional question, should this box that represents you and I, should it be empty? In the Romans we read 10, 14 through 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And this specific gift box, I believe it's a great challenge for us as God's children today during this season. Because we know that God loved all of us so much that he sent his greatest gift who was the son Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ and his living word lives and abides within you, that means you and I, we have something to give. For example, if I have no money, I cannot give anyone any money. If I have no food and someone's hungry, I cannot give it to them. Because a lot of times, I was challenged, you know, when I was preparing for this message, that we do put focus on Jesus. Yes, he is the foundation. He is the main focus. But then the challenge that came to my heart, church, was, but Stan, you received the gift of life, didn't you? Yeah, I did. What are you doing with that gift? I'm enjoying it. Okay. But are you sharing this gift of life with others? A little guilt. Stan, did you receive hope, salvation, faith, encouragement from me? Yes, I did. What are you doing with it? Enjoying it again. And I think the challenge for us, church, is all the gifts that are from above that we have received from God, from Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. It's not for us only to enjoy, but it's also for us to share with others. It's for us to pass on that hope to others. It's for us to encourage others. A few weeks ago, on one of our construction projects, one of our uh, subcontractors was working and uh, he was limping and they were doing uh, landscaping and it's very tough work. And in my heart, I felt like, you know, Stan, why don't you go there and pray for him? I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. You know, there's going to be a language barrier. You know, let me just be a professional general contractor and let the subcontractors, you know, worry about their own thing. But I didn't have peace in my heart. It kept on weighing me, weighing me. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, I just came out to, hey, amigo, como estas? Oh, bien, bien. And, you know, whatever, two words that I know in Spanish, I talked with him. I'm like, hey, what's with your knee? He goes, oh, it just started to bother me and hurt me. You know, in his broken language, he shared with me. And inside of me, I felt like, pray for him, Stan. I'm like, oh, man, do I got to do this thing? I'm probably going to embarrass myself. He's going to think, what's, what's this guy, you know, trying to pray for me? Just, you know, let me do my work, pay me, and let me get out of here. So I told him, I said, hey, can I pray for you? He looked at me like all surprised. And I'm like, oh, man, that's not the look I wanted to see from him. He's like, see, see, yes, yes. I said, okay, let me pray for you. I say, believe in Jesus, Jesus, oh, see, see, okay, let's, okay, let's pray. So as I put my hand on him, I started to pray for him. He took off his hat, and he began to pray with me, something I did not expect. So I'm praying in English, he's praying in Espanol, glory Dios, Jesus, and, you know, whatever he was praying in his language. And after I prayed for him, he had a smile on his face. He's like, oh, thank you, Stan. I have not seen him since then, because that was the last day that they were doing that job. But you know what? I'm not sure how he felt that day after I walked away. I felt good. It was just a small deed. But I had to, church, get out of my comfort zone. You see, when we talk about the good news I just read to you about, I'm going to read one more verse and we're going to conclude. The good news was not limited to us only. The good news is not limited of the Christmas message only to a church or to religious gatherings. The good news that we received, and we call it good news, now we have a responsibility or this opportunity to become like the gift box that's not empty, but we carry something there that we can pass on unto someone else. And what an honor and privilege it is, church, to do so. And when the angels, they uh, saw the shepherds, this is what they told them concerning this good news in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. 
But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And I think that's the, one of the greater challenges for us as God's children. Is that we are also like a gift to this world. We have received gifts from him. And not only spiritual gifts that the Bible talks about. Just a smile. Every time I go through a checkout, a lot of times the cashier will say, Hey, how are you today? I say, good. But I learned not to stop there. In response, I say, how are you doing today? And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. All of a sudden, their countenance change. I didn't do nothing special. I didn't tell them, wow, you look so awesome. Or, or no. Or, you know, they're, usually their tag says how many years they worked for that, you know, store. No, it's just a simple response. How are you today? And as we're going to pray right now, church, in this prayer, let it be a good opportunity for us just to reflect this past year, the past season of our life, reflect upon, Lord, have I been trusting you like that rock? Have I been allowing you to become that cornerstone over my marriage, over my children, over my business? Also reflection as we pray, Lord, what kind of seeds have I been sowing this year? And if maybe the harvest that was, or the crops that were rising up, maybe that's not what you expected. It's a great challenge as we enter into next year to say, Lord, teach me to sow those seeds of life, seeds of hope, seeds of faith that will not only bless me and my family, but also bless others around me. And maybe some of us today need to be reminded to say, Lord, I thank you that you still love me. I thank you that I'm still your son. I thank you that I'm still your daughter. I thank you that you got my marriage. I thank you that even though things may seem out of control, I thank you for your love letters that you remind me from time to time. And also as we pray, we say, Lord, let me not become like this empty box because I have a lot to give. It's nothing has to be anything too spiritual, too powerful. Simple things, a testimony, a prayer, encouragement, helping somebody out. I don't know, giving somebody $10, whatever it may be. Let us rise up, church. Let this opportunity be an opportunity for us to be grateful to our Heavenly Father. To thank Him for the ultimate gift that He has given us, who is His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.